good to see everybody. Um, so today we are here for our second session of Conchas y Café. Uh, if you are able to mute yourselves while we're speaking, that'll help a little bit. Um, so that way uh, people don't get too much background noise. Um, obviously, if you have any questions or comments as, as uh, Abraham is presenting today, you'll be able to, you know, unmute yourself and you can you can interact that way. Uh, today's session is going to be led by Abraham, our master teaching artist, and um, I'll be kind of in the background with some uh, technical support type of stuff, uh, but you should all have uh, access to the handout for this week on Google Classroom, and we'll go ahead and get started. So with that, I pass it off to Abraham. Hi, guys. So uh, can you help me out with the uh, putting out the, what's it, control I want to get the text over the tab but to present screen. Present screen. Okay. There we go. Awesome. All right. So, guys, uh, just a quick one. Uh, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Good. So, we have today's quote, which is They say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. Y en español, uh, dicen que la historia no se repite, pero rima. Esta cuota fue escrita por Samuel Langford Clements. This quote was uh, written by Samuel Langford Clements. Uh, was uh, born November 30th, 1835. Uh, to, uh, he, was, he died on uh, April 21st, 1910. And uh, he also had a nom de plume, which is uh, in French means pen name. Uh, it's the famous uh, Mark Twain, and uh, he also wrote The uh, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and The Gilded Age, and A Tramp Abroad. So, este escritor tuvo su pseudónimo de Mark Twain, y escribió Las Aventuras de Tom Sawyer, Las Aventuras de Huckleberry Finn, La Edad Dorada, Una Vagabundo en el Extranjero. So... About this quote, guys, what do you guys think about this quote? Luis, how do I get back to the, um, the screen? Oh, I see it. Okay. Are you speaking about the quote? Um, yes. What they say like? history does not. Uh, they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. O en español dicen que la historia no se repite, pero que rima. He was known for being, um, you know, sarcastic and funny. So mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. Like my first response is to kind of take it as a joke. I really, I'm having trouble kind of wrapping my around. It, it's like it's, the it's truth meant, underneath it, even though yeah. it, it's meant to do that. I think. Yeah, you're right in that regard. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. It's like if um, he putting his hands on his hip and says, "History does not repeat itself." You know, like in a uh, controversy, an argument, or um, you know, standing on his values or his opinion. Yeah, definitely throughout ages like, you mm -hmm. know, certain events that kind of repeat themselves because they're caused by humans mm -hmm. so in that sense like we may not have like another world war for example but we may have like you know the consequences of division or the consequences of greed or hegemony or you know extreme nationalism and it may not be the exact same thing for history but there mm -hmm. is a certain like similarities so I feel like through human history, humans repeat certain, like, you know, themes and uh, consequence of that. Those actions mirror, mirror, you know, past events. Yes, you got that right. And also, you guys see the little bit of antithesis that here that Luis discussed last week? Yeah. Right? Basically, it's telling you the first thing is wrong. It's basically claiming it's actually uh, repeats itself, right? Like, because in poetry, we have a lot of repetition, right? And so the, we're going to cover a little more of these in today's lecture. So here we go. Hold on, let me see if I find 
So uh, it's a tab or window? Oh, shoot. Let me see. Let me see. A window? Yes. Let me see. It's a window? window? Okay. Let's go back to the text. So here we go. So we have a little more. Yeah. Oof. So we have repetition, the use of, of the term, word, phrase, or idea used over and over. Repetition as a rhyme is a strong mnemonic device. A mnemonic device are techniques a person can use to help improve their ability to remember something. Oral poets especially use it for remembering structures. Repetition is the primary way of splitting a pattern through rhythm, meaning accrues through repetition. El uso del mismo término, palabra, frase o idea una y otra vez. Repetición, tal como la rima, es una fuer un fuerte, uh, una técnica mnemónica fuerte. Las uh, mnemónicas uh, técnicas que uno puede usar para ayudarse a mejorar su capacidad para recordar algo. La poesía oral es pitch especialmente lo utiliza para recordar estructuras repetitivas al formato principal de crear un patrón a través del ritmo. El significado se acumula a través de la repetición. Me regreso. So for everybody who has been in Conchasi Cafe, we have already dealt with repetition throughout the many years, right? We have used repetition in words, ideas, or rhymes, right? So yeah, this is a, a thing that we're gonna use today. We're gonna use a little bit of uh, repetition as well. But um, today we're gonna use a technique called Sestina. And I'm gonna give you well, what the Sestina is, okay? Sestina, from the Italian sesto, meaning sixth. Sestina is a form of poetry invented by Arnold Daniel, who was a troubadour of the 12th century and was praised by even Dante, the creator of um, uh, Dante's Inferno or the Divine Comedy. And in the pieces that he wrote, he wrote that uh, this troubadour was the best smith. And so the Sestina is a composed of six stanzas of six lines each, which are called sixians. And throughout all the stanzas, the last word of each line from the first stanza will be rearranged. And this will follow by a stanza of each of three lines. This is called a tercet, also containing all the original six words. And this last tercet on the sestina is called an envoy. I'm just going to put it in Spanish now, so for somebody who wants to watch the video in Spanish later. Sestina, del italiano sexto, que significa sexto. Sestina es una forma de poesía inventada por Arnold Daniel, que fue un trovador del siglo XII y fue elogiado por Dante como el mejor herrero. La Sestina se compone de seis estrofas. De seis versos cada una que se denomina sexiens y algo a lo largo de todas las estrofas se ordenarán las últimas palabras de cada verso de la primera estrofa y a esto eh, seguida, seguirá una estrofa de tres versos esto se llama un terceto que también es conocido es con, contiene todas las seis palabras originales Y este último terceto en una cestina se llama un envoy. Okay, so let's see if we can find the, do we have the, the graph? Because I know this, this sounds a little complicated because it's basically arranging words throughout the whole poem. And it's a formula for this. And I have a little piece of... Do you have a... Um... I have a, something I'm going to put on the screen so you guys can oh, see what I was okay, talking about. Yeah. Because I know it's it's a little complicated first time you hear it, but once you start working with it, you will get it. No, I remember something mm -hmm. a while back we had the stances. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
There you go. You guys can see now? You're working behind, behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you guys can see now? Not quite. No? Oh. Yeah, we kind of see it. Yeah. OK. You can zoom in yeah, a little more. So Sistina is composed of six stanzas. And you can see this is one stanza over there. And each stanza is going to have six lines, right? And that's why it's called a sixian, because it has six lines. And so the first, each line, it's gonna have an ending board. Sorry, let me wait until the helicopter passes. I think it's kind of interfering. <laughs> we did rob a bank. So yeah, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, so each line is gonna have an ending word. And this is the, the first stanza. It's gonna be the most important because it's gonna have the six words that are going to be used throughout the entire poem because the entire poem has six stanzas and each one again is going to have six lines so we're going to use all these words from the six the six ending words from the first stanza we're going to use it throughout the poem but they're going to be just rearranged and at the end we have an envoy which is three lines let me see you see it oh crap Oops. I bought her fingers. <laughs> okay. So see, I have six stanzas. And the last one, which is basically this seventh, we're going to have three lines. But the three lines is still going to have the six words that we started from the beginning. Okay. So yeah, it's still a little bit complicated, but we're going to use the poem to give you an example of how I use this. So if you guys can grab a piece of paper or something to write a couple of uh, something down. Uh, just keep it on the same page. Yeah. So also, for those of you that, that downloaded the handout from Google Classroom, uh, I created a different little graph that yeah. might also be helpful for yeah. you to, to reference. Mm -hmm. So this is the basic um, definition of a, of a sestina that Abraham already went over has a couple of little different details, um, specifically about the way that the envoy is written. So you, you do want to take, take that into consideration. Um, but this is the basic structure of a, sesti, of a full sestina, where this would be the first line, second line on the sides here. And then you have the stanzas. So if the first line ends with the letter A, or we'll call it word A, the second stanza We'll move the first uh, end word from the first line down to the second line, um, and so on and so on. You'll, you can reference this little chart to also help you. Um, and I will we'll post on Google Classroom the, ha the other handout that, that Abraham created as well. So you can you know use both of them. Yeah, this reference. one is a little more compact. But uh, as you can see, it can be a little strange to write on. So the, the one that I provided, it's a little more like you can write on. This one's more compact, so it's, it's a little tricky, but it's still, you can use this one as well. They're the same thing, just explain a little differently. Just keep in mind that the letters are the, like the place for the last word of each line. So, you know, that's, that's what, where it really matters is the end words of each line will get rearranged based on this pattern that you see here. And as Abraham said, we do have a poem for you guys to look at that uses the Sestina form. Okay. So you guys can please take a piece of paper and a pencil or something to write on because we're going to use, we're going to put our hands onto this so we can understand it. It's a little bit more into, it's hard to explain it. It's better to start working on it. Okay. Let me know when you guys are ready. Uh, I'll just wait. I'll give you a couple of minutes to get something to write on. Okay. So we have the first stanza is going to have six lines, right? So I'm going to rewrite, uh, reading it. And I want you to write a number on each one. I put like the first one I said, you're going to put one. 
the second one I say is gonna be two. So after I finish one line, you wanna write the last word, okay? So I'm gonna go, okay? At six o'clock, we were waiting for coffee. Second line, waiting for coffee and the charitable crumb. We're gonna move on to the third line, which is that was going to be served to a certain balcony. Okay, so we're gonna move to the fourth line. Like kings of old, or like a miracle. We're gonna move to fifth. It was still dark, one foot on the sun. We're gonna move to the last, which is the sixth. It steady itself from a long ripple in the river. That's the last word, okay? So I'm gonna just say in Spanish, so you, Everybody who's watching in Spanish can understand, okay? So, para los que están en español, este, voy a leer esta estrofa y va a tener las seis líneas, ¿verdad? Y cada vez que termine una línea, quiero que escriban la última palabra que dije con el número, ¿ok? De la consecutivo. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, ¿ok? A las seis en punto, estábamos esperando el café. Vamos a la segunda línea, ¿ok? Esperando el café y la amiga... Caridad. Ahí está la segunda. La tercera. Que iba a ser servido desde cierto balcón. Ahora vamos a movernos a la cuarta. Como reyes de antaño, como un milagro. Ahora vamos a la quinta. Aún estábamos, ahí aún estaba oscuro, un pie del sol. Ahora vamos a la última, que es la sexta. Se estabilizó sobre una, una larga ondulación en el río. Okay. So, okay. Can you guys give me the list, please? You guys have the list of words? Yeah. Okay. Let's go for the first one. Who wants to say the first one? Coffee. There you go. Perfect. Second one. So anybody Crumb. has the second? Crumb. Perfect. Now we have the third word. Balcony. Perfect. See, it's gonna be easy. As long as we just keep on going. Then we're gonna go for the fourth. Anybody has it? Miracle. Perfect. Then fifth. Sun. Okay, sun, perfect. And the last one. River. Perfect. River. See? We're getting it. Okay. So these are the most important words of the Sixtina that we're writing. I mean, we really right now. This is going to construct the entire Sixtina. We're just going to have to rearrange all the words throughout. And that's why we're going to use the, the handout that I'm going to give you. And we also have to put in mind that the, this type of poem has been there for a long time. So as all poetry, it evolves. So you may see different arrangement somewhere out there, especially on the envoy, which is the last part of it. So don't get like, oh, this is wrong. It might be right. You just have to trust like somebody else writing different um, numbers on it. But we're gonna go stick with these ones, okay? So we're gonna move on to the next exercise, which basically keep the numbers and I'm gonna give you the handle on the screen and you're gonna end, finish the sentence that I'm gonna be uh, reading by you guys just checking the handout, okay? Can you turn it on? the second stanza so we did the first stanza now we're gonna move to the second one okay oh there you go so, so you guys can see the numbers right so we're gonna just go to the second stanza first line i'm gonna be reading and you guys gonna finish the last word for me okay so this is how it goes okay the first ferry of the day had just crossed the river perfect Okay, so we're gonna go to the second stanza, second line, okay? It was so cold, we hope that the cough, I'm oh, sorry, the what? Sorry, I got excited. What's the word for, the, for that one? Say it again. It was so cold, we hope, hope that the cough, that the, and then we're gonna use? Sun? No. no. 
Is the first uh, the first word that we used on the on the first stanza? Oh, the second word was crew. Coffee. Yeah, there you go. Coffee. There you go. We're on it was the so second, cold. We hope the second that the coffee. There you go. Okay, we're gonna move to the third line. Okay. You guys are getting it. Okay. We'll be very hot. Seeing that there. What's the last word? Sun. Perfect. There you go. Then we're going to move to the fourth one. What's not going to warm us on the day? Can somebody say that out one, please? Crumb. 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 Okay. Let's see. Yeah, you got it right. No. So not crumb. It's the fourth one. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's the second word with crumb. Okay. Then we're going to move to the fifth one. Okay. Would be a love each. Buttered by a miracle. miracle. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, then we're gonna move on to the last one, okay? Which is the sixth line of the second stanza, okay? At seven, a man step out on the balcony. Perfect. So you guys see we have all the six words, but they're different places, right? Mm -hmm. And so, déjenme explicar un poco en español. Este, para entender estas tazas, como vimos en, español, en inglés, la leímos cada parte y solo le cambiamos las palabras que usamos en la primera estanza y las pusimos en la segunda, pero diferente posición. Y lo que tienen que acordarse es de que, por ejemplo, en, en este poema, como fue escrito en, en, en inglés, va a cambiar un poco porque como son las últimas palabras, en español el verbo va primero y después el adjetivo y en inglés es al revés. So hay palabras que no van a estar exactamente al final, ¿verdad? So este como no sé cuántos haya que hablan español en, en la clase, lo voy a decir yo, ¿ok? Déjame regreso. El primer ferry del día acaba de cruzar el río que viene siendo la eh, sexta palabra del primer estanza. Después seguimos. Hacía tanto frío que esperábamos que el café, que viene siendo la primera uh, palabra de la primera estanza. Okay. Después haría mucho calor viendo que el sol, que viene siendo la quinta palabra de la primera estanza. Después no nos iba a calentar y que la miga, y la miga fue la... Uh, pues, la segunda palabra de la primera estancia. Que después sería un pan cada uno untado con mantequilla por un milagro. El milagro viene siendo la cuarta palabra de la primera estancia. Después a las siete un hombre salió al balcón. Y balcón fue la tercera palabra de la primera estancia. So you guys can see, this is going to go throughout the entire poem, which is six estancias. We're just going to move on to the last one because everything's going to be almost the same. Just as you guys can see, just follow the numbers and you will be fine. Okay. So the last part of this type of poem is called the envoy. If the envoy is not exclusive to uh, Sistinas, it can, it can be used in different other poems. But it's basically a resume of, of all the text that we cover. So in this case, it's going to have all the words that we were using. So because there are only three lines, we're going to have six words compacted in there. So each one is going to have two, okay? So we're going to do the same we did at the beginning. So let me see where it sits. I'm going to read it, and you guys hopefully can uh, help me out with the words, okay? You guys ready? Are you guys ready? Ready. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna give a pause, and you're gonna I'm gonna let you say the word, and then we're gonna move on to the next one, okay? So this is the first line of the envoy, right? We licked up the crumb, perfect, and swallow the coffee, perfect. Then we're gonna move to the second line of the envoy, right? A window across the river, perfect, river. awesome. Caught the sun. Perfect. See? So as you can see, it cannot even becomes predictable. So you just have to keep on with the formula. Okay? 
the last one is gonna be the third line of the envoy, okay? As if the miracle. miracle. Awesome. We're working on the wrong. Got it. See, we did a, a sistina. <laughs> how was that, guys? You liked it, or, or you guys? How you feel about this? <laughs> but uh, I, I'm I'm confused because on the uh, the third line, uh -huh. it's supposed to be F and then A. The third Is that line. correct? On which one? Of the envoy, the oh, third yeah. line of the. Well, yeah. and yeah, it depends. Again, it depends on where. Um, which are we doing? Uh, for example, I'm telling you changes depending on, on what type of style. And this one is second. And the one that I have, it goes second, first, sixth, fifth, fourth, and third. And I have seen different variations of it. So it just depends. So what, what you're getting confused by, Ani, is the fact that uh, the, the poem that was provided yep. is using yeah. Uh, the same structure for the six sayings, but the envoy, they decided to change the envoy. Yeah. In contemporary poetry, you see that a lot more often, yeah. but the uh, traditional sestina, it uses the structure that, that I provided in the uh, the handout that was uploaded. So, so you know, okay, there's, okay. there's I'm, I'm sure there's a little bit of confusion because of that, but yes. do keep in mind, you know, that, that the, the envoy, that closing stanza, you you can basically do it however you feel works best based on the words that you're using. But if you want okay, to challenge, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't I wasn't like, you know what I mean. Right. No, you're so right. If, if it's not supposed, if if the if the example doesn't match the the chart that we were giving, yeah, then yeah. I'm not going crazy. That's yeah. all I wanted to know. When I was preparing the lecture, <laughs> I also have a different chart, and then when I saw the poem. It has the envoy as well changed, so I have to change it. And it's, it's already researched, and they said, like, yeah, there's a lot of changing here and there, especially, like yeah. Luis said, in more contemporary Sistinas. So keep that in mind. You see another Sistina somewhere else, don't say, oh, it's wrong. It might be right. It's just a different type. The yeah. whole point of the Sistina is to have a repetition of words, right? And just a rearranging mm -hmm. different way, right? So that's the whole point mm -hmm. of it. Well, my ears uh, is trying to keep up with you, yeah. but because I was not able to uh, finish my chart, mm -hmm. that's my challenge. <laughs> it's all right. Again, you can just follow the chart and you will be fine. And, but uh, I don't have the chart. I wasn't able oh, no. to uh, write right. it down. Though. You can download it. Uh, you don't. You, you oh. have them. You send them right. Yeah, so on Google Classroom this week, I'll upload the the uh, other chart that Abraham provided, um, okay. the one that we were looking at to to sort of fill in the blanks, um, okay. because that's going to help you to actually write your sestina for for this week, which I'm assuming okay. is what Abraham is going to do. Yes, and that's going to be your homework, guys. Thank you for being evil, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have, I have a couple. I have a couple of comments. Um, yes. yes, I know through the invoice structure, all the words that we have. For the Sistina and the Envoy, um, all of them match, except there's no letter D in these words. However, for some reason, well, most of them are, are algebra for some reason. Yeah. It, I, it, I, I kept thinking about algebra and math. <laughs> which brought with us. It may, that may sound strange, but I kept thinking about math. I yes. I kept thinking about yes. algebra problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at a lot of uh, different charts, and that's the first yeah. thing that I gave me. That's what I changed to the other chart. So I felt like it was oh, really good. muddy. Really yeah. Muddy. It's, but okay. once you start working in it, it's going to be easy. That's why we went through all the, uh, the system well, by, with the class. Thank you. So yes. you'll be fine when you follow it. And so this is the homework. Um, you're going to use the chart that I gave you. Are you going to? Oh, oh. Well, the same that you guys saw on the screen, uh, Luis is going to send it to you. or is going to post it on the uh, Google class. And basically, you just have to use six words that you're going to repeat throughout the entire poem, right? And since we are working on food for this uh, session, so hopefully you guys can work a point with food and work on your cistinas. And I don't know how much time you have. You have a half Okay, cool. So I'm going to give you an extra tip uh, so you guys can um, have a little more uh, help on your cistinas at home. So, guys.
Patient with the idea. Okay, so we're gonna use three different new terms for you guys, and probably we have used a couple of them before. So hopefully somebody can read the first one, which is homonyms. You guys can see it? You want us to volunteer to read or? Yes, please. Okay, I, I'll do it. I, I, I read uh, already homonyms. Did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> homonyms are words that are spelled the same and sound the same but have different meanings. For example, mm -hmm. uh, to address, uh, address can be to, to speak to. It can also be address, which is a location. Yes. Arm can be a body part. It can also be a division of a company. A band can be a musical group. It can also be a ring that you wear on your finger. Bark is a tree's outer layer, and it also can be the sound that a dog makes. Okay, awesome. Uh, hold on, let me see. Um, we have dark ring. So somebody else can hopefully read the next one, which is how homophones. Awesome, Mauricio. Homophones are words that sound the same, but have distinctly different meanings and different spellings. For example, break and break. I told her if she didn't hit the break in time, she would break the car side mirror. To sell and sell. If you sell drugs, you will get arrested and end up in prison. Cell. Sent and sent. I won't spend one cent on a bottle of perfume until I know that I love the scent. Hour and hour. We have one hour before our appointment with the real estate agent. Okay, thank you, Mauricio. And we have the last one, the last term for you guys. Homographs, please. Somebody else can take that one, please. I'll read it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Homographs. From the Greek for same writing, a word that shares the same written form as another word, but has a different meaning. Mm -hmm. Example, read and read. I read the book, read the Led, 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 or led, led, lead. He led the way with spread leaders to lead with a led like resolve. Awesome, thank you. So you guys, so you guys can see that these have a really useful Part for our uh, Sistinas because all of these words have multiple meanings or sounds. So, for example, you have only six words that you're gonna be using a lot. You want to have more range, something to expand your vocabulary or your lines or your uh, ideas, right? So this is gonna help you if you use some of these. It's gonna help you get easier uh, lines, right? Because it's gonna be harder if you get just a simple word. This one have multiple meanings, multiple sounds. So it's going to be easier for you to get a 16 using these different terms, okay? Any questions? So that means that uh, when we're, we choose those six words that are going to be repeated throughout the 16, they mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to have the same meaning or exactly. even the same, you know, the same sound or, mm -hmm. yeah. So you okay. see, that gives you more freedom, right? You can find more more lines with that. Because that's going to be a tricky part, repeating yeah. a word so many times. So these type of words are going to help you. It doesn't have to be all the words, but some of the words you may want to put them in there. Also words that you know you can repeat a lot, right? So you have to be smart about finding the words. So a good thing to start is, without anything, start with your six words, right? And then you're going to start seeing how they play out. But you have to be smart about what kind of words you want to use, right? Somebody is uh, sending something. Oh, okay. Uh, Annie, Annie, uh, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I did. I didn't want to interrupt you no, if you had some, if you were gonna finish something else. But mm -hmm. I, um, I, this might this might sound like kind of a weird question, but I I mean it very sincerely because I, I want to be able to get behind it. Yeah. Why? What is the reason for somebody to write 
a poem in this form just for the exercise of it or does it have some Well, I think, you know what I, mean? like, I think the, the first is who, who are using it. They use, I saw a lot of uh, people writing and doing uh, lectures on them. They basically using a lot of an exercise and also gives you a chance to see words in a different way and come up with different lines that you wouldn't by other means, right? It, it, it expands your creativity. It's, it's one of those things that you have rules and it kind of leads you to different ways that you wouldn't have by yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It forces you to yeah. uh, to be more creative and resourceful. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the same, very same question as you, Annie. Anybody else have any questions before? I don't know what time. Yeah. Sorry, not today. So it's bad. Abraham, how uh, how close to the to the, um, I guess, the structure do we have to keep it? Like, I prefer I you guys to keep as close as you can. But again, as you can see, it's not as, as uh, you can be free with it. But it, like Anna yeah. said, it's better when you try to keep it. So it kind of challenges you. Mm -hmm. And you see, I think you're going to even enjoy more reading your other uh, comrades or your <laughs> classmates. Because you're going to see how they came up with their solutions to this. Basically, it's a problem, right? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to read everybody else's Stina and see how they manage to get all these words in different arrangements, right? Especially in the Envoy. I'm, I'm excited for that one. <laughs> Is there anything that says that it has to be like, I've noticed in the mm -hmm. example that all of the like ending words in the stanzas yeah. are items or, you know, they're physical things. They're not like, for example, a preposition or... No, it can, uh, be, it can be any word. The only thing you have to keep anyway. in mind is you have to repeat that word uh, right. to a certain degree, right? Like we, we checked the other, uh, the other examples that I gave you. It doesn't have to mm -hmm. be exact, but it has to at least sounds like or be written like it, right? Yeah. Okay, so our assignment is six stanzas. Yeah, which six lines each. Six lines each. And all of these lines are going to have the six words from the first stanza. And so there's six Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's it's, it's a long one that's, that's eight that, that what, what is six oh. times six thirty okay <laughs> yeah. so that's plus the last three would are in the envoy right what so Michelle it's a say challenge I'm not, I'm not going easy with you guys this is a challenge I'm <laughs> challenging you guys six times six <laughs> <laughs> now we're yeah, talking right, math guys, now we're talking math <laughs> right that's right <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Whoa, with me. Yes. And it's a, tri it's a tricky one. This is going to put a, um, how do you say, a booster shot under our port, uh, no, our writing ability. Yes, and that's the point, right? That's the oh, point. Oh, man. <laughs> Love it. And Abraham, they should not rhyme, yes? I mean, no, uh, it doesn't have to rhyme. They don't have to rhyme. They don't have to, but they mm. could. They could if you want to. Yeah. And can you, just for my benefit, mm. can you repeat the, the theme in terms of the food thing? Because I haven't had a chance to watch last week's um, well, video been, yet. To you, get... Well, so far, it's just about food. Yeah. So you can expand it as the way you like. So this, this poem is already a lot of constraints. So you can go wild as food goes. You can write a recipe or you can write a story about food. Or I don't know if you were hungry. Depends, right? So that you're free to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that mean to put you like, oh, and then it has to be this type of ingredients. <laughs> well, remember you gave us permission, so we're gonna blame you. Oh yeah, global warming, <laughs> the economy. Bring it on. My fault. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> um, just like a quick recap of last week's class was mm -hmm. about how food relates to, I guess, us in terms of um, whether it can benefit us. And the whole topic of last week's class was like what food can do that words cannot. And that was actually a sign. Yeah. We use a term called antithesis, which is another way to like say like, okay, words can't do this, but food can do it. Yes. So that was kind of like the 
the theme of uh, last week's mm -hmm. food and how it relates to us. Cool. Yeah, I think maybe once I watch watch the video and do that assignment maybe first, and then maybe that will kind of like set me up for this one so I'll understand it better. Thank you, though. Thank you for that explanation. <laughs> we got oh. this. Yes, Mauricio, we got this. We're not scared of the challenge. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I, 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 since we have a little more time, I want to ask you a question. Um, because we're talking about repetition. I want to see what do you guys think uh, when you guys are writing your own poems, how do you guys see repetition? Repeat? Yeah, how do you guys see repetition when you guys are writing your own poetry? Do you guys have it in mind? Do you guys, in mind? Yeah. Oh no, it comes, well, well, mm -hmm. for me it comes naturally. Mm -hmm. So you have like a good rhythm on you already? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I actually try to avoid repetition. Okay. Unless unless it has a um, a central and vital, like essential connection to the through line of the poem. Like if it's if it's adding something to repeat that mm -hmm. again and again to for emphasis uh, of what the theme is and where it's going. Otherwise, I try not to because mm -hmm. I, I feel like um, you know, with poetry, especially we're working with a certain number of words, a limited number of words anyway, and it kind of, um, if we're not being creative with, mm. with the words that we're using, what's the point? So as a general rule, if I see myself using the same words again and again to mm. describe the same thing, I actually try to avoid that, mm. but there's a time and a place for it. That's for me, that's how I deal with that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, all of that is very true. You know, it depends on uh, where you want to go with it and what uh, positive uh, note mm -hmm. you want to make on it. And, um, you know, there's just some, you know, strong points. You know, stand tall, stand straight, stand truthful, you know, just, you know, so it depends on what you want to say okay. and what it's, yeah, who you're talking to as well. Definitely, yeah. It's a great way to uh, build momentum, too, is what I've noticed. Yes. And, and also, I noticed that, for example, that I tend to I use it for um, kind of driving the, the idea over and over if I feel like it needs to. You know, it doesn't have to be even words. It just has to be the idea of it. So that's how I sometimes use it as well. I think it also depends on what you're writing about. Yeah your topic or theme or subject matter mm -hmm. and how that's relatable for you, you to write because you want to make sure that you like to ensure that what you're writing the poem makes sense and then you read it and you write it mm -hmm. however you don't want to be redundant either and i think there's a difference between a petition and being redundant in a yes, poem when you write the poem. well you know I was, looking, looking, I was looking at a picture the other night and this boy was going out and his mom says don't stay out after 12 o'clock and don't come in here with your clothes on and you don't, you don't choose to tell them all the don'ts. <laughs> it's a negative conversation. <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I don't know how much time we have. Uh, good? I think that's it. Okay. So, you guys, finish your homework. I want to see this. Sistinas, really. I'm excited. And uh, leave you with Luis. He may have some announcements. Yeah. Uh, are you guys able to hear me okay? Not in clear. Yes, me. All right. So, um, you know, today's lesson obviously is, uh, you know, a little on the more complicated and advanced mm -hmm. side from what we normally cover, but I do think that it's a great challenge. And, you know, like Abraham said, once you understand that those final six words in the very first stanza are going to be repeated in different orders, um, you know, that's that's really key. And, you know, the question about the type of word that you're going to have at the very end, if it's a noun, an object or a person or a place, you know, those those are actually really going to help you a lot in being able to structure a sentence a line specifically around that word. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure you, you guys will all have, have pretty pretty good uh, poems that they will be crafting. 
Um, one last thing uh, before I uh, address Ani's question or comment. Next week, we will have a workshopping session. So for next week, there's no lesson. Just come prepared to share your work. Hopefully, if we do have people here um, in person uh, next week, we'll uh, give them a chance to share as well. And, and that way, all of you can get feedback from everyone else. But uh, next week, again, no lesson. There will be a session, um, but you'll be able to share the work that you've completed up to this point. Um, so just keep that in mind. Be prepared for next week uh, if you are ready to share something. Uh, Ani, you had a question? You're on mute. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I was just taking a minute to read the, the poem that was the example mm -hmm. to kind of um, to see what the impact was of repeating those particular words and trying to understand why those words, like why those six words, did they have some kind of um, meaning other than it works to be able to tell the story by just repeating those same words because they were integral to the whole thing. Is there some, is there another level to like how, how you choose what those words are going to be? I mean, is it, um, are they, are they meant to provide like some kind of thematic structure to, or I don't know. I feel the same way. Well, yeah, I think that that's a really good observation to make about any kind of poem. Um, because you have to remember, right, poetry is a very deliberate use of words. So the more specific you are with your words, a lot of times, you know, the, the easier certain things will be, the, the easier your metaphors will come across, you know, the more impact your, your word plays will have. And if anything, you know, a sestina, just like most other kinds of poetry, you know, it, it's really meant to emphasize whatever the message is that, that is being conveyed. Um, so those words, they will be, you know, just by, by, the, by the act of repeating them, they will be important to the poem. That said, as you're writing your poem, don't feel like you have to really think about what those words are. Um, they just might happen to be, you know, a, a, just a general word that, that you can use over and over again. Um, and, you know, it, it'll, it'll sort of have whatever meaning is attached to it uh, as, as the poem develops. You know, like, don't, don't put too much thought into it before you get started. Just let it go. And if you come up with the sestina, great. If not, you know, that's, that's okay. Uh, the sestina comes from the editing. You know, that, that's really the way at the point where you're going to really craft it as a sestina. Um, I can almost guarantee you that the guy that created it, Arnaud, back in, you know, 12th century France, he, he probably did not write sestinas right off the top of his head. He more than likely wrote down his ideas, then went back and, and used the editing process to craft it into a sestina. And that's pretty universal with all forms of writing. Any last questions or comments? At the end of the day, this still has to be obviously like regarding somehow food. Yeah, you know, the, the mm -hmm. overall theme for Conchas y Café this time around is food. Um, nothing specific about food, just eat food. So you could write whatever whatever comes. Yeah, like this poem was about food too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean the poem coffee. itself today, you know, is about coffee and breakfast. So, you know. It, it could be about, I don't know, tacos and beer. So. Somebody's wine. Exactly. That's a good one. <laughs> we could probably make a theme out of the words that and on the stanzas, you know, like it doesn't the poem today didn't seem like it had a rhyme or reason besides breakfast, but... You know, yeah, you know how much the person enjoys coffee. I mean, I, I definitely related to the poem in that way. Yeah. Cool. 
me. Looking forward to something new. So, um, again, one last time, uh, you know, this recording, as choppy as it might have come out because of our little technical glitches at the beginning, it will still go up onto Google Classroom. Um, the handout that I posted to Google Classroom is also going to go on there. And then I'm going to add the uh, other handout that Abraham created to help you write your Sestina. Um, so that little graph, that little chart that he created, where it's basically fill in the blanks, uh, you guys will be able to use that to uh, actually create your homework. Uh, cool. But feel free to reference the the handout that, that I posted earlier as a sort of guide to to guide your your structure of the system. Okay. So, you guys don't have any other questions. Uh, looks like we're calling it a night, fifteen minutes early. So, yeah, good job, everyone. I believe in you. I know that you'll be able to write a Sestina this week. Um, and remember, next week we'll be workshopping. So uh, if you want some, to share something, you yeah. have something ready, uh, you know, be ready to, to share it with the group next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Thank everyone. You, Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Louise. Abraham. Take it easy. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you, Louise. Bye. Thank you.